uh, for information for you guys. Um, a disclaimer, I did not get this reprogrammed because according to WAMS, it doesn't work anymore after I did my, uh, my upgrade um, with them for the radio. So I'm stuck with this. I don't want to sell it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do some research and um, so you guys can get an idea of... Uh, of how it works so I'm gonna be tapping into my uh, radio wires there since I have my harness wires that I ran from the cluster so everything in here is already plugged in and into the steering wheel um, I don't have lights on this they say it after you do the gauge cluster upgrade um, it automatically works again so we're gonna test that today uh, hopefully I don't need a new clock spring because then I have to disassemble the whole steering wheel again So right now I have 13 one miles So 132,991 And because miles are not going to be displaying on this because it's not reprogrammed So what we're going to have to do is um, It's just going to be for testing to see if the uh, controls work in the back uh, We're going to test if the controls work on the back without changing the cluster just running your wires um, so we're gonna test some of that we're gonna test it if it does work that's fine for whoever wants to do this if not uh, we'll swap it to the to this cluster and see if it works doing that but keep in mind this is just for research it is not gonna work hundred percent because it's not reprogrammed so I don't want no comments saying oh you fucked it up blah 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 um, this is just so you guys can see um, how it works if it works um, honestly my truck has been out of warranty for a while now so uh, I really don't care anymore um, so this is just for you guys so you guys can see what's going on alright guys so I got I peeled back some of the um, tape that's around the, the harness um, because I need to cut into those wires and according to this pin 3 on this connector we're going to cut um, pin 3 and we're going to attach it to pin 1 from the harness coming from the cluster. And then from the harness coming from the cluster, pin 18, we're going to attach it to pin 3 on this one. And then pin 4, we're going to cut it and attach it to pin 17 on the harness, on the cluster. Uh, I mean, we're going to cut pin 4 and attach it to pin 2 on the cluster. And then from the cluster, pin 17, we're going to bring it back to pin 4. And those wires we need to cut and attach. We can't just tap into them. And then the last one, pin 7, we're going to attach it to pin 5 on the cluster. So that one we don't need to cut. We can just tap into it. So I'm going to cut those wires and leave enough space uh, for you to go back. But like I said, this is just for research. So I'm going to cut a little further back. That way, if it doesn't work because it's not reprogrammed, then I can just undo those and resolder them back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you guys take a closer look here, you guys can see the little numbers right there from 1 to 4. And then from 5 to 8. So we're going to tap into uh, those wires. We're going to be cutting into that. So let me do the first one and then I'll show you guys. Alright, so we cut it, um, pin 3, the harness side goes to pin 1 on the cluster side, which is my yellow wire, and then it returns from the cluster as pin 18, and it goes back into the connector, and 18 is my green wire, and then pin 4 on the connector side, we cut it, the harness side goes to pin 2, which is my black wire, and then it returns from the cluster as pin 17, which is my red wire. And it comes back into the connector side on pin 4. And then the last pin, which is number 7 on the connector. And that one we're just going to tap into pin 5 on the cluster, which is my purple wire. So I did all that. I'm going to tape them up a little bit before we solder anything or before we put any shrink, um, shrink tubing. And we're going to plug it back in and see if it works. See if it works with the stock uh, cluster. If it doesn't, we're going to swap the cluster 
and put in the Z71 cluster and if it doesn't work then most likely it either needs reprogramming or one of my wires in my cluster that I put into the connector um, is not making full contact so I'm going to tape this up and plug it back in alright guys so I got all the stuff back in there um, that's my radio here so you guys will be able to see all the wires while the radio still functions because of what I had done previously so we're gonna just go ahead and try it out see what it does okay it's all right, so I believe it's not turning on, which might mean that the original cluster is not sending the signal to the HMI module because it's supposed to be now connected um, in Canvas, which means that the cluster uh, connects to the HMI, connects to the radio. Before it was just a radio connecting to the HMI. So I'm guessing the cluster doesn't have the capabilities to uh, connect to the radio therefore the radio not turning on so I'm gonna swap the cluster now and keep in mind remember how many miles I had uh, 132,191 so we're gonna test it see if it works uh, drive it around see if my miles gain and then go back to the my original cluster see if my miles change all right so I plugged in the Z71 cluster and it's first try, so we're all gonna see what happens when it's the first time doing it. All right, so I can see the radio came on, but I want to show you guys first this what's going on here. Um, but I can definitely see the radio on with my eyes. Park assist system dismiss. We're gonna press. We're gonna press. Oh, oh. Bluetooth device connected, Galaxy Note 9, that's my phone. We're gonna click uh, the OK button. Oh, it works. Radio's on, my phone's connected. I'm gonna hook it up to my tablet now. It can play some, something from there. So I was gonna hook up, my tablet's gonna, oh, it already turned on on its own. I'm going to Pandora. Now I won't be able to play the music because copyrights. Uh, but you guys can hear it. Okay, okay. So, um, I don't know. This is new to me. I never had something like this in a car. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're going to go to... Uh... Okay, buttons work. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see, I have navigation. Wonder what it does. Uh, maybe we need to put a direction to somewhere. Okay. Well, okay, okay, okay. Well, I guess this is good news. It it works. Um, but like I said, you're not gonna be able to get miles. Um. Other than that, everything else should work. Check engine lights on because the truck is not on. So we're gonna, if we turn it on, it should go off. Um, other than that, the part showing that it's on park and it's southeast, which is correct. I'm facing southeast. Uh, options, speed warning. Uh, Okay, so overall, I mean, uh, it's, it's not bad at all. Uh, volume, let's try the volume. I don't know which one's volume, which one's skip. Okay, this this is volume up on this side, the top button. The volume down is the bottom button. Oh my God, this is so nice. Wish I, I should have done this a long time ago. And then the top button on this side, uh, I don't know what it does. 
it's supposed to be like skip not too sure um, it doesn't seem to be doing anything I'm not really sure what it's supposed to do um, but I mean volume works so that's a plus and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like skip I need to see why it's not functioning I also want to show you guys that I believe the lights are working on the steering wheel. I just have to kind of put something under so you guys can really see because it's still daylight. But I believe they are working. Um, I'm pretty sure they are. So anyways, I'm going to test this a little bit more. I'm going to solder those wires up and then do a little test drive. Uh, probably drive like 100 miles, come back and see if my miles gained on my original cluster okay the, the buttons on the left side are skip um, but like I was saying I don't know why I didn't want to work with Pandora but I'm, I'm at the radio now and I'm gonna change the station you guys can see it's working up and down well, that's pretty cool so I'm gonna I'm gonna play with this around a little bit more and then uh, I'll come back and give you guys my final thoughts Alright, I'm back on the Pandora and I don't know, maybe it was just a glitch, but now it's working again. Uh, I'm clicking the up button and it's switching tracks. And whatever you're seeing on the screen, on the... It, the screen is not really flashing, it's just the recording from the phone. Uh, this makes it look like it's flashing, but it's really not. So there you guys have it. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna solder that up, clean this all up, and then I'll be back to show you guys. All right, so I solder all my wires and I put shrink tubing on them. Now I'm gonna wrap them in uh, electrical tape and tuck everything back in place and put everything back together the way it was. So, so yep. Yeah. All right, so I want to show you guys that. Uh, Everything's working fine. The lights look really nice. Uh, I'm driving right now currently. And uh, as you guys can see, the lights do work now. So that's a good sign. And um, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. The only thing, like I said, uh, miles don't show if you guys can see on the bottom of the screen right there. And then trip also doesn't uh, rank up the miles. So that's, that's the only thing that I've seen so far that it doesn't work. Uh, the trip and the miles, they don't uh, keep adding up. Uh, but other than that, uh, fuel range, your oil percentage, and then the tire pressure came on. So it wasn't showing at first, but as soon as I started driving it, it started showing it. Um, average miles temperature for the transmission and that which I don't have a 4x4 and then also this on the trip it says V8 on the bottom right uh, my choice of V6 so that's another thing um, but if you have a V8 I know that it doesn't go to 4 uh, even though a 6 uh, does that uh, the cylinder deactivation because I turned it off uh, so I don't even know if it'll go into a 4 if it does I think it does um, but overall it's been working fine I'm, I'm liking it so far um, just the miles is I'll just like it because I keep track of however often I change my uh, oil changes which is every 5,000 miles so I'm guess I'm gonna have to base it off of the percentage um, technically I should have like a, a thousand miles more before I change my oil and it's usually I have like 30% uh, left of oil life every time I change it. So yeah, overall it's not too bad. Alright, so we're back. Um, it's been a um, couple of weeks since I swapped it and I haven't switched back to the original. So that's what I'm going to do today um, to see how many miles we gained. I'm pretty sure I already driven... Um, maybe a thousand miles maybe a little over a thousand miles um, and this is temporary I'm currently waiting for 
um, wants to send me back the Denali cluster that's going to be replacing this. So that's going to be real cool. So I'm a, that's going to be towards the end of the video. But right now we're going to take this one off. So to remove it, pop the cover. It just pulls up. Just a little bit of force. It's just held by clips. Then four uh, seven millimeter bolts or three. My bad, three. And I believe there's also some clips on this piece. There's gonna be a clip here and then a clip on this side uh, before we're able to completely remove this cover. So I'm gonna remove those now. So what I do here in order to remove it, I turn on the truck, uh, put the shifter all the way down, steering wheel all the way down. That way you don't have to remove this um, this bottom trim piece for the clips. And you just work your way up. You just pull it up, out, work your way up, and it should come off. Uh, as you guys can see, those little things on the bottom, they go down into the into the knee booster, or whatever it's called. And then it's just the clips holding it in place. So remove that, put it away. Uh, somewhere and then you have one two three four four seven millimeter screws to remove this so I'm gonna remove that now all right so I just plugged it back in and if I remember correctly those are the same models that I had but I haven't turned on the truck so let's see if uh, if the miles go up or what happens uh, all right as you guys can see miles did go up that's almost a thousand miles no I don't know you guys can do the math I had 12 I mean uh, 13 2 9 9 1 and the miles went up but then radio doesn't work again so this cluster cannot communicate with the HMI and the radio therefore you cannot gain steering wheel controls with a stock work truck cluster you need to upgrade to at least an LT cluster with a 3.5 inch screen or 4 inch screen whatever it is um, so yeah so next up I'm gonna swap this for the Denali cluster and uh, show you guys the features in that.